the following may not be suitable for children under the age of 18. The show contains coarse language, sexual references, and my own personal views and opinions. Please note that all characters are made up and fictional, and are designed for comedy satire and not harm. Thank you for listening, and please enjoy the show. The following show was recorded live on Mixler with Johnny Florida as my guest from Rosling's National Committee. This is a uh, very special day for us, and which is why I played some very special music for anybody that recognizes the music. Uh, you know exactly where I'm getting at. Welcome to not Wrestling's National Committee. This is not a WNC show. This is a WNC technical supported uh, broadcast, if you will. This is 100% me welcoming in uh, our Aussie, our brother, our blunder from down under. Welcome to uh, the live debut of the Sky Genie Show. And I am Johnny Florida, your annoying American Irishman prick, or whatever names you want to call me. And I am honored to be able to do this today and to unveil to everybody the main host of tonight's show, the Australian sensation himself, Mr. Sky Genie. Hello, my masters, and welcome to the Sky Genie Show, the absolute worst show ever. <laughs> We're on episode 32 of the Sky Genie Show, and we are live? Holy fuck. Yes, we are live. Yes, we are live. Unless you're listening to us on YouTube, then you're not, and if you're wigging out listening to us to YouTube, it's not live. So, introducing my guest is Johnny Florida. Yep. Yeah, how you doing, Johnny? I'm doing pretty good up here. You know, for once, I am the guest. Uh, have nothing to do with this. Um, and you're saying that you a quick thing just to help you out. You're saying that you this is the absolute worst or something. Uh, if it makes you feel the better, worst. you said you like the worst podcast or something out there. Um, C pipes in the chat room. Our Canadian uh, buddy up here says uh, can't be anything worse than Michael Corvin does. So you're already up a leg if it makes you feel better in the eyes of the fans. <laughs> oh well. Okay, well, let's get into this <laughs> pay-per-view predictions. <laughs> so if you understand why it's the worst podcast ever, I'm a shit host. I'll be happy to admit that, but I don't give a fuck. Let's have fun. So we'll get into the pay-per-view predictions for Elimination cha- Chamber. Uh, what I'll do, I'll let Johnny go first since he's the guest, and I'll weigh in in my opinions after it. So the first match will be Luke Harper versus Randy Orton. Johnny, you go first. All right. Um, the idea, the, the, the okay, a match between Luke Harper and Randy Orton itself sounds like a good show, a good match to be honest. You know, and anybody that's thinking oh, you got to be kidding me, well, let's let's face it. Randy Orton's been on a great streak so far with the way he's changed to being a follower of the Wyatts. And Luke Harper's put on some great performances in the past, to be honest. You know, I mean, we can remember back that ladder match that he had for the IC title with Dolph Ziggler. And I'm not trying to cut him short, but Luke Harper was not expected to do as well as he did. It just doesn't seem like his kind of match. A cage match, a tables match, but a ladder match, it's just not widely seen. So he amazes with that, and that's my way of just giving a quick innuendo to the show. The guy can put on a performance. You can have two different styles of wrestling. You got, I mean, you got a definitely strong style and big style of Luke Harper, and you've got um, Randy Orton, um, who's technical in ways, but has also got a lot of speed behind him. So the match itself is going to be definitely good. Now the whole gimmick behind it 
Many people wonder if there's going to be a big swerve in the match. People are thinking it's, it's when it leads to WrestleMania, there's going to be a swerve there. We'll see what happens. Um, I'm just not a fan of them breaking up the Wyatts. They've been on a roll with everything they've done. And yet, you know, they had them win the tag tiles and they lost a few weeks later to the American Alpha, for God's sake. Um, it's... I just don't want to see them break up the Wyatts, you know? And especially when they're down to three guys right now. Braun Strowman's on Raw, and Eric Rowan's still on injury. So, that's basically my three cents. Or my three pence or whatever. I don't know what you guys use in Australia for change. I know they call it pence in uh, the oh, UK. We're cents. Okay, cents. Okay, my three cents on the exchange rate. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Well, I guess it well, in my opinion. Uh, I have something going into this match. It kind of pissed me off. And it, watching, I didn't get the... Smackdown this week, but I did get to watch the end of Ryan Smackdown, but uh, I saw the match between John Cena and Randy Orton, and okay, that was, it, it, it was what it was, Cena, Cena and Orton, you like them or you don't. Uh, what pissed me off was the fact that John, John Cena pinned Randy Orton in the first place when Randy Orton is the Royal Rumble winner. Yeah. To me, the Royal Rumble winner should if he's going to lose a match, be a fuck finish, yeah. at least going into it. Because otherwise, if you pin him clean by the champion, even if it's even if it's not meant to be Randy Orton versus John Cena at Randy at WrestleMania, just either don't have the match or do a fuck finish. Exactly. They had a perfect set. They had a perfect setup on t- Tuesday for a fu- to do that, but they didn't. Uh, for this between Luke Harper and Randy Orton, it, it has been something that's building up. And Luke Harper is in need of a push. But if anybody needs to go over here, it's Randy Orton. Because if you have Luke Harper go over... Yeah, Luke Harper is a great talent. It'll be a huge rub. But Randy Orton is the guy that's going into WrestleMania. And you need him going in strong. So for my pick, it will be Randy Orton. Yeah. Now, and that right there, I mean, you know, just to quickly go back to like what you said... Um, it's crazy to think that they would even book Randy Orton versus John Cena. You have the champion, uh, and as much as I hate saying that because I cannot stand John Cena, but you have the champion versus the war, war, ah, Royal Rumble winner. And presumably, if John Cena maintains the title, that's who is going to be the, the, the championship matches Orton versus Cena so putting them in that match together was asinine because you know it just make it's not going to make things look better um with the upcoming with Wrestlemania like all oh, Orton lost cleanly is he going to be able to come back and avenge no it makes it look stupid like that it makes it like it doesn't give any p- push for it and for all of us smart fans out there we already are expecting that Bray Wyatt's going to win the championship. Some people believe that there might be a flip, and you'll see, like, um, Baron Corbin, uh, quite possibly. Uh, I wouldn't put him uh, past somebody to do something like that. But it's... I, I, have, sorry, I have a flip scenario, but that will come at later. I'll put that yeah. in for that one. But, yeah, you, you go. Sorry. Yeah. No, that's just basically it. It's, like, it, it's expected if John Cena maintains the title... It, it, by them putting this match on, it just makes everyone believe, okay, John Cena's not going to be retaining the title Elimination Chamber, which a lot of us expected. But for anybody else that's not the super smart fans that do the research and find everything on the grapevine, they're not going to be thinking this. And now they're going to be thinking it because, well, they booked this match right before the Elimination Chamber. Clearly, it's not happening in Mania. So, yeah, that's my ch- okay. sense on that. Okay, so we'll move on to Apollo Crews and Kalisto versus Dolph Ziggler. So, Johnny, your thoughts on that? It's going to be a squash match. Dolph's going to take him out. He's the heel. When you book a handicap match against the heel, you can guarantee the heel's going to be going over. And when they have a handicap match against the babyface, it can go either or. This is just going to be a way to have Dolph Ziggler... I really don't know, just... He's going to crush Kalisto, and it's going to mostly look like a one-on-one with him and Apollo Crews, so it's just going to be a way to test out Apollo and see if he's quality or not, which we know he is, but in terms of a storyline, possibly having the two of them face each other in Mania or something, I don't know. Okay. Um, I have a 
thought on this. Not that it's actually going to happen, but a theory. For the fact that it's two baby faces versus a heel makes me think somebody is debuting and could it be that Dolph Ziggler is getting a bodyguard? Now, we have seen this in the past with Shawn Michaels and Dolph Ziggler before, but could somebody be coming up from NXT to be Dolph Ziggler's bodyguard? That's up. To, that's something I like to keep on the nose. Um, and I, I also I also say Dolph Ziggler goes over, but, but it's because Chris and Kalisto get taken out by somebody. Oh, that's definitely a possibility. I could see them pulling something like that. Um, just the um, the question would be who, you know? And, like, you know, Nakamura, whether he's actually injured or it's storyline, they're not going to have him do it with Dolph Ziggler. Samoa Joe's already been pulled up to the main roster. Not going to be Bobby Roode. They're not going to pull up, break apart insanity. So the only question would be who, do you, who would you think they'd have come up you know what? You know who I would think, and not not who, but whom? Like just who would be coming up? Uh, I could see the authors of pain. Hmm. Think about think about this. They are big guys. They're, even though it's a tag team, they are big guys. And later when you're coming up, you're gonna have you're gonna have a, less teams that'll be going into WrestleMania. Can the authors of pain debut with Dolph Ziggler? And you don't have one bodyguard, but two. Didn't they just win the tag titles, though? Yeah, but Kevin Owens was NXT champion when he got called up, so... (laughs) Possible, yeah, but I mean, right before Mania... Possible? But if it's not not just Authors of Pain, I would think the Revival, because they also are people that... Well, let's face it, right now, they're pretty much done with everything in NXT, so they pretty much need to come up. And, of course, you'd have the after WrestleMania, but then after WrestleMania debuts are becoming a bit too predictable. So to be debuting them beforehand could also help them in the long run. But I don't I don't think that would be for them. But I, I think Authors of Pain would be more of an idea. But either way, I still see Dolph Ziggler going over in that match. Oh, yeah. No, there's no way he's not going to go over. So. Well. Oh. Well, we'll move on. Uh, Becky Lynch versus Mickey James. Your Mickey, thoughts? Mickey James. It's too soon for her to get squashed or even beaten in my mind. If they have her get beaten, it's going to probably be at Mania, depending on who they're going to push. Uh, are they going to push for Alexa Bliss to go uh, to um, turn on her or Mickey James turn on her, like out of, out of spite or st- smugness or something? Um, it, I'm a fan of Becky. You know, being an Irishman, I've she's gorgeous and I'm a fan of hers, but and she's got a good, she's got a good in ring experience, but it's Mickey hands down. Uh, I'll say Mickey James too. But, um, I had another thing, and this is another similar thing to the John Cena thing before, but although I'm not so much pissed off with. Uh, the other week it was a tag match between I think it was Naomi and Becky Lynch versus Alexa Bliss and Mickey James. And it was the baby faces who got the win. Yeah, it was to it was to build up Naomi for the women's championship. But me thinking with Mickey James in, she's she's the heel. When you debut a heel, you got to establish them as a heel and get those cheap wins. And here I see Mickey James going over for that win, but I think she should have had that all of all along. Yeah. And no, and the only person that they've called up so far that I think they've done a perfect job with was Samoa Joe. Yeah. In, in, in my thinking with that, because he he's a guy that came up and he injured Seth Rollins and it made him a badass instantly and then he beats Roman Reigns clean and it makes him a, a bigger threat so that's what I think they should should be doing to Mickey James he is not, not, not so much as a small Joe character but sort of building her up as a heel entity so when she finally gets beaten she gives a rub to Becky Lynch or yeah. somebody up and coming. Not to mention, unlike uh, other than Natalia, she's the most experienced re- uh, female wrestler on the roster. Exactly. <laughs> anyway, um, you got any more? Or you want to move on? On the Mickey James Becky, there's not much to say. I'm looking more forward to what they're going to do at Mania because I think there's going to be a lot of interesting stuff going on. Um, supposedly they're supposed to have a 
Naomi Alexa Bliss again at Mania after this um, pay per view. I don't know if they're going to do a similar thing with like they're doing with the, the Fatal Four Way on Raw. I mean, for Raw on Mania, but we'll see. There's no way Mickey James is going to be coming back and then not be in Mania, whether as a wrestler or a manager. So it's just time and see for that. That's what I'm looking forward to. And so we'll move on to the next one the Women's Championship, Alexa Bliss versus Naomi. Your thoughts? <sighs> Some people are thinking that Naomi's going to have a good chance, and I think she's on a roll, but I just don't see them taking the title off of Alexa just quite yet. They're building her up pretty good. For a small girl, you know, there's a lot of stuff to her gimmick and her character. Clearly, there's certain things that guys love about her. Um, I just, now that she's got Mickie James on her side, I don't see them taking the title. I, I know, like, you know, shout out to my, my boss man, uh, Old Man Jenkins. He says Naomi for the win because it's also Black History Month here in the United States. And that can make sense in a way, but I mean, because WWE will do these kind of things, let's face it. But I just don't think that they're going to take the title from Alexa this soon, especially now that she's got Mickey James. If, it, if we were talking, say, two, three months down the road, sure. WrestleMania, possible. Depends on who they're going to book against her and how they bill it. But it's going to be Alexa. I just... I just can't see Naomi. I'm not saying Naomi doesn't deserve to have the weight of the women's division on her to see her, you know, carry it on. I'm just saying the way they built Alexa is just, I just don't see any other way. Uh, I have to agree with Alexa Bliss. Um, one thing with Naomi, and I don't want to say this as a criticism because she's a good wrestler in the ring and all this. I just don't think her gimmick is championship material to be quite honest, because, okay, she comes out all glowing and dancing around, but what is her gimmick? Like, what, what, what is there to expand on? And where does the seriousness come into being a champion? Because to me, being a champion, you have to be pretty damn serious. And the dancing black girl, while it is, is a good gimmick and it gets people exciting, but is it a championship gimmick? Well, I mean... Well... Well, let's be fair. I mean, in the wrestling world, you could be of any gimmick and be a champion. I mean, there's been some crazy people out there. I mean, over here in uh, in the sure. in the U.S., we've got a uh, we've got a wrestler on the in the California scene by the name of the Hobo, and that's literally his gimmick is that he's a hobo. You know, he comes and I'd love talking about him. He when he's being billed, he's being billed from Hobo Ken, New Jersey, at a weight of two hundred and two cans of beans. You know, and that guy just got done being the United tag team champions, uh, one half of them, for uh, the United Wrestling Network and Championship Wrestling from Hollywood. So you can have any kind of gimmick. I mean, hell, we had um, we had uh, Super Eric and uh, Shockboy in TNA. If anybody can, if those guys are able to perform and make a long-time gimmick, I mean, anybody can be a champion regardless of their gimmick. Uh, trust me, I have a lo long rant on Eric Young, but that's a, that's a story for another day. <laughs> uh, the next match will be the Tag Team Turmoil for the Tag Team Championship. I can't be... Well, be fuck reading out the name, so what are your thoughts? Um, this is probably going to be... You know what's funny is that this, other than the Elimination Chamber, should probably be the biggest hype match. I mean, you've got... Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six different teams. And it's probably going to be a big boar fest. The only team of all of those that are over is kind of American Alpha. Heat Slater and Rhino were over, but then after they lost the tag titles, they had that thing where on Talking Smack where Rhino said the hell with it and he basically broke up the tag team. I'm surprised that they brought him back. My money says that they... WWE got desperate and decided to put him back together for this. Um, this is not really going to be much, to be honest. So, I just... American Alpha is going to win the tag titles in probably one of the most boring tag team match... Uh, turmoil matches I've ever seen. So... I expe okay. expect Ooh. them to come out at number four. Remember, tag team turmoil is a two team start. Yes. One team gets eliminated and the next one comes out and the next one comes out. They're going to make American Alpha look good. So I see them coming out as number four to eliminate the team they face. Then they eliminate team five and then team six. So. 
with that, if, it, if that were me to put him over, I'll, I'll put him at the start, let him go through the whole teams, because that, that to me would make them establish as a good, as a really good tag team. Because then, with that, with with my thought, because th- this ties into the Dolph Ziggler thing of the new, the, of a team debuting, or what if? Because I don't think American Alpha goes over here and they face. Uh, I guess it would be the revival that would be coming up at WrestleMania for the tag team championship. Because I don't see any any of these other teams that 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 are either good or bad to be going into WrestleMania. But then they could be scrapped altogether. Um, you got a point there. Um, there's some wiggle room with that, but you got a point. I'll give you that. Because when you think about it, the SmackDown and Tag Team Championships, while they both had both the both championship reigns of of those particular divisions have pretty good teams or wrestlers attached to them, they're not exactly t- uh, matches you can think of that would be a WrestleMania kind kind of match, unless you have American Alpha versus the the Revival or something like that. But besides that, I don't see it being something that big this year. Um. SmackDown, their tag oh, team. SmackDown's been doing a lot of good stuff on their show. That's why they've been getting much better, and they're starting to almost outdo Raw. I mean, they had the last SmackDown and Raw of the year. SmackDown beat them. Um, but the tag team division's been so lightweight. Uh, there's more, much better tag teams on Raw. So if they pulled up someone like The Revival or someone else from, um, from, oh, crap, from NXT... It could do wonders for the tag team division. It's crazy to think that SmackDown's got six tag teams in this turmoil, and yet they're not really pushed that much. And what I think they need to do is have a powerhouse tag team go after American Alpha. It could be like the Authors of Pain. Maybe have the Authors of Pain, you know, just get so greedy and so powerful in their mind that they just drop the NXT tag titles and come on up to the main roster and be like, you know, we're here to take over or something. They got Paul Elwin behind, but then out of nowhere, after about a week or two of them beating the hell out of um, out of the American Alpha, you got Kurt Angle coming, and he can manage them for WrestleMania. That would, and people keep talking about that uh, the idea of Kurt Angle with them. It would build them up. So now you're bringing up the Authors of Pain, who are going to be a powerhouse tag team, and meanwhile you're also bringing Kurt Angle to help build up the American Alpha. Okay. Uh, I guess we'll move on from that. We go to the piss break, <laughs> which will be Nikki Bella versus Natalia. Your thoughts? <sighs> let, let me ask this. How messy is your toilet going to get? How, say again? How messy is your toilet going to get? <laughs> um... Uh, it's not going to get messy at all because I'm probably not even going to be watching this pay-per-view. Um, I, phew, God. I feel like I'm trying to figure out who's going to win in a fight between Paul Rubinks and Khloe Kardashian. Um, I, you know Nikki Bella is supposedly going to be retiring after this WrestleMania, so she's going to win there. So my, my, my money says they're going to have Natalia beat her. And this is probably going to be ending the feud or something. They're going to have Natalia beat Nikki, let her look better, and then um, then they'll go on to Mania with what the plan is that she's that she they got going on for her. So uh, I th- I got my money on Nikki Bella. I mean not Natalia, Natalia. Wow. I have to think the same because I have a I have this weird weird feeling that they're going to extend this to Mania, and. <laughs> Nikki Bella, I I fucking hate Nikki Bella. I can't stand her talking. <laughs> I can't. Okay, she might be hot, but f- shut the fuck up, bitch. Let me <laughs> let me say there's an American saying, and I know you probably got it in in uh, down under as well. Um, Nikki Bella is that girl, and I'm gonna keep this clean because of both YouTube and just because I don't know what the PG ratings are in the in. Ah, oh, fuck it, I, I, dude, dude. Nikki Bella, I, I told. I, Nikki Bell. Hold on, with the, with the retarded stuff, I, I talk about retarded 34-year-old children on my show, so don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> hey, stop talking about me. That, that, that's called the Genie Junior gag, so Jeez. that's kind of done now. But go on. Oh my God, that's I gotta listen into. I have missed some of those. Then, um, what is it? You got um, Nikki Bell is the girl that you get with. Uh, you meet her at the bar. You meet her at a club. You just meet her anywhere, and you get with her. But she's also the girl that, you know, you got those girls you want to see again, you want to have fun with again, you want to possibly date. Nikki Bell is the girl that you take home and then never call again. That's what she is. Oh. You saying like, okay, yeah, she may be good looking. That's my way of saying it. She's that girl that is good looking, but you don't call the next morning. Yeah. Uh, I'll also put her, she, she's the chick you put a gang in the mouth and tell her to shut the fuck up. Just fuck. It, 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 I'd rather not. I'd rather not have Jacks over her any day. Uh, um. Yeah, I'll say Natalia wins. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I can't really dispute that too much more. Um, isn't it supposed to be a pre-show match that they got planned? Pre-show. I have no idea. Um, I don't know if any of them. Well, yeah, there was got... no. Because I got these off. Um. Of Wikipedia, none of them said that there were pre-show matches. But if I guess it was any of them that would be a pre-show match, it would either be the handicap match or the Becky Lynch and Mickey James match. Those are gonna be pay-per-views, but aren't they supposed to like? I thought I thought I saw something that showed they were doing like Mojo Rowley and Kurt Hawkins or something. Probably, but because uh, yeah. uh, here's the thing, I, like I'll watch the pay-per-view because I had to do other stuff that morning, so I'll probably miss that the pre-show anyway. So it uh, doesn't really, really matter what happens on the pre-show. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, really? Um, it, anyway, so I guess we go on to the main event. Unless you got anything more, Nikki Bella and Natalia. No, that's bas- That's a. Uh, I can't really say much else. Um, <laughs> what do you call it? Uh, um, yeah, I think we just got the main event left. I, I could, I guess, but I'll be, probably be a sexist after that. <laughs> uh, I guess we go to the main event. We got the WWE Championship Elimination Chamber between John Cena. AJ Styles, Dean Ambrose, The Miz, Baron Corbin, and Bray Wyatt. Your thoughts? Um, I, I, supposedly, and the biggest rumor is that it's going to be Bray Wyatt, as we've been talking about before. Um, there's always a chance that they could pull a fast one and Cena retains because he's got to be the main event at WrestleMania. I would not put it past him to do that. But if it's supposedly going to be Bray, I'm looking at this more, how they're going to develop the rest of these matches because if you look at this if you look at the six people there was supposedly a number of ways they're doing this supposedly John Cena is supposed to face off against The Miz with Nikki Bella and Maurice in an intergender tag match a couples tag match at Wrestlemania so Yay. if that happens um, I w- anybody that watches The Chamber watch that portion because I wouldn't be surprised if Miz is the one who causes Cena to be eliminated or he does something but they're going to use it as the fuel to start things off they might have maurice and john cena out i mean not, not john cena wow uh no one cena he would get with her maurice and nikki bella outside the chamber trying to root on and somehow it causes like a fight between the two of them and that's what helps leading it into mania as well apparently and this is also and i do not like this but the claim is that they had at a house show aj styles was involved in some match and afterwards he picked up the intercontinental championship and raised it up. And they're looking at the idea of AJ versus Dean Ambrose for the Intercontinental title. Or they may... They I, wouldn't, I wouldn't be against that, actually, but... Well, I'm kind of against it, but they're, uh, to at least add it, on, it, they're, look, they're looking at a six-man it, IC title ladder match like they did last Mania. But my problem with it is to have him be the World Heavyweight Champion and basically carry SmackDown, not just as the World Champion, but as the best competitor... To then be downgraded to the IC title. Look, I'll, I'll say this. A, a long-time wrestling fan, to me, the most prestigious title in the WWE is the Intercontinental title. Every company has a World Heavyweight Championship. But only two companies have ever had Intercontinental. and That's WWE and IWGP. So to me, the IC title is prestigious. But to be the World Champion and go right to the IC title? Daniel Bryan was out for a while on medical. That's why... Um, that's why he ha- that's why he went down to the IC title at least and helped build him back up. AJ Styles, it would just be a complete insult. Okay, um, my my thing with that though, because because the rumors of that is AJ Styles is, is supposed to sh- face Shane McMahon, and yeah. for me personally, I would rather him face Dean Ambrose for a title than 
Shane McMahon. Not to say anything bad about Shane McMahon. He can he can wrestle. He can he can go in the ring. And we've seen last year he does crazy shit still. But to me, that doesn't help AJ at all. Him winning the Intercontinental Championship is an accolade for him under a name. So he could say, well, I'm a former Intercontinental Champion when, after it's all said and done. Yeah, but um, if yeah. anything, it would be a detriment at this point. You know, how they've built Chris Jericho over the years to go back and forth between the world title and the Intercontinental title worked. Many other stars have been able to do that. Miz is a clear example. You know, being a WWE champion, and now he's been in the IC title limelight for like three years and does great at it. But AJ Styles, if he were to go and win the IC title, it's just a way of WWE is showing, look, we gave you the world title, we made the fans look like um, that you are capable of, of being a champion. It makes us look like we're not stingy to TNA guys, but we're not going to let you carry the company for too, too long. So we take the title off of you to give it to John Cena, only for him to lose it two weeks later at the Chamber, and then you're going to win the Intercontinental title. And they're going to plateau him at that. I wouldn't be surprised if we didn't... If they were to give AJ the IC title, you ain't seen him in the world picture, world title picture for at least a good six months. That is true. Uh, so I guess we'll, with my thing for the main event, um, I think John Cena retains... And I had this weird, weird, weird thought that I've had going on. And I know I've seen all the Meltzer thing with the tag match. Supposedly he's going to face Maurice and, and the Miz with, with Nikki Bella. But then I don't necessarily see that. I, and because I don't see John Cena having a two-week championship reign at all. I mean, to to me, it, John Cena is not that guy. He uh, I could see him winning the Royal Rumble losing at Mania, but to be a transitional champion within two weeks, I don't think so. I think John Cena retains and goes into a triple threat with Orton and Wyatt. And here's one, one thing I'm thinking, because apparently there are rumours that John Cena is taking time off after WrestleMania, and there are others that Randy Orton is too. So my thinking is, do they put Bray over, put him, put him over John Cena and Randy Orton that gives him credibility because beforehand he's lost every other feud to me that would help Bray Wyatt a lot well I mean uh, well how are you going to get Bray Wyatt into the main event then Randy Orton won the rumble so he's in but how do you get Bray Wyatt into the main event of Wrestlemania oh WWE logic mate who, <laughs> who knows <laughs> he, you know how WWE does things they'll just put people in and just go yep just accept it like, like that, there's probably a million ways. Like Randy, Or Randy Orton and Bray Wyatt could start feuding in between, or Randy Orton accidentally costs Bray Wyatt the championship. It starts to get a little bit heated. Daniel Bryan or Shane McMahon comes out. We we'll go, hey, let's add you to the match. Boom. Yeah. Uh, okay. It, some of it makes no sense, but then yeah. it's WWE. When do they ever make sense around this time? Yeah. Now, how about this? Uh, C pipes in the chat. He brought up the idea that he thinks AJ. He calls AJ Styles his dark horse to win the title. He thinks maybe AJ might win it back and then be able to go and um, uh, go to WrestleMania and face against Randy Orton. I would like to see that match. Ray Orton, AJ, uh, do you think there's any possibility to that? I'd like to see it, but, uh, but I don't think it would happen. Like, I, I, I personally would love to, but he, you got to also remember, AJ Styles did also have a six-month reign or so before that. So for him, for him like he, could he win it and face Randy Orton? Yes, but I still don't see him doing it. I think they have plans for AJ Styles going on, going forward. Because also, WWE around WrestleMania, you got to think, they rely on the people that they know will draw. Yeah. Which is why they're going with Brock Lesnar, Goldberg. Which is why they're going with Re Roman Reigns and Undertaker. It's stuff like that because Undertaker and Goldberg and Brock Lesnar are proven draws, and that's what they go with. And because this is one of the topics I was going to bring up with you if, if we had time, because we got about twenty minutes or so, don't we? Yeah, we got about another eighteen minutes. Oh, well, I guess we'll go into that. So that's <laughs> pay per predictions. Um, because uh, you, you, you and Michael Corvin brought up a brought up a, something a while back about how why they are relying on part time talent. Yeah, and for me, it, it's it's thinking because a lot of the full time talent aren't really connecting. 
because you and and here's one thing that you watch with the attitude era or even before that even the little things you you the the it'll be the heel coming in the being the most vicious motherfucker out there is the is the one that insults you he's the one that wants to rape your girlfriend he's the one that wants to uh destroy your life so you have like a Bret Hart or a Steve Austin comes on who's the baby face and he's looking at you directly in the camera this is one one thing I think is looking in the camera saying cuz you want to punch that heel in the face he comes along and says well I could fight for you I can I can beat, beat this guy what I need is your support and I need you to buy my merchandise this and that and I will beat this guy so it would be little, little things like that to sort of get me interested in that character because what is that character going to do for me? And that's a real disconnect with Roman Reigns because I've never seen a promo or a interview or anything to say of saying that Roman Reigns is fighting for me, which is why I think there's a huge disconnect with full-time talent and part-time because part-time talent get it. Yes, that is WWE's fault in a way because that's how they tell them don't look at the camera, but... I th- yeah, so what are your thoughts? I, I would say, okay, I can knock this down when talking about four guys. Lesnar, Goldberg, Taker, and Roman Reigns, like you mentioned them before. WWE is not building their entire roster like they used to be. Back in 2000, 2001, you had world champions like The Rock, Stone Cold, Triple H, Kurt Angle were being built up. But you also had your intercontinental champions like Chris Jericho, like Mr. Vacant. If anybody gets the joke. Yeah, like, um... Stevie Richards. Yeah, like Stephen Richards was built. The right to censor was built up. You had European champions like Val Venus, D'Lo Brown, and Al Snow built up. You had Crash Holly. Anytime there was a hardcore title match between two wrestlers, as soon as the match was over and someone pinned, he would run on in, pin the guy, or attack the guy quickly who had the title, and as soon as he uh, the the pinfall hit, he'd grab the belt and run away. It was a great gimmick. It was it was hysterical. WWE used to build their entire gimmick, but it's not like that anymore now. Now they build up a few people here and there, and they have some mid card people that they build up a little bit here and there. Like guys like the Miz have been able to build himself up, along with the uh, with the writers allowing it. Now because of that, that's why they're tending to rely on guys like. Um, Goldberg, Undertaker, and Brock Lesnar. They're thinking to themselves, these guys are proven draws. We can use them. And Undertaker was a draw. Undertaker was a huge draw. The guy was great in the 90s and great in the early 2000s. His last peak WrestleMania that I think where he had a super draw uh, on his own without the idea of a downturn was... His match with Edge for the World Heavyweight title. Streak versus streak. It was like 11. That's when Undertaker had 11 wins versus Edge's 6 wins. They both had a undefeated at WrestleMania. Um, and, and then he had a couple other matches like the end of an era with Triple H. You know, or Shawn Michaels in retiring him there. Those were good. But he's been just been going down and now people are tired of him. They're like, just please retire. The streak is over. You know, the aura of him is gone. Under, uh, 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 Brock Lesnar... Was getting a big draw, but he also had a problem when they gave him the world title and he was off TV for like four or five months. That didn't look good. And now he had that damn drug test with the UFC. And when people are asking, well, why didn't WWE drug test? And they just go, oh, we don't drug test our part timers. That actually made a bad taste in the eyes of a lot of fans that read that. I can tell you that. And then with Goldberg. <sighs> Goldberg is a good draw, and Goldberg was a beast back in the day, but the fact that they're dusting him off after... They dusted him off last year's Survivor Series uh, 16. Let's see, it's November. Twelve and a half years after he left WWE, which was March or April of 2004, after WrestleMania 20. You know? And, Gold, like, you know, C-Pop's even saying it. Goldberg looks in great shape. The guy looks in great shape. The guy looks as strong as he always he was. He does. So I'm not knocking him like that, but... It's like, um, it's still been 12 years, and he's a great nostalgia piece, but to put him on the main event of WrestleMania, especially when there's the talk that they're going to have him squash Kevin Owens like he did Brock Lesnar and win the Universal title, and he's going to go off and face for the Universal title, uh, with the Universal title at Mania, it, 
it, a lot of fans are going, we have people we're fans of. Can you put someone in that we've built a rapport with? This is why WWE lost a lot of fan respect when they got rid of Damian Sandow, you know, and other stars and stuff. They've, they, the fans build a rapport with someone, and WWE just goes, well, we don't want to push them, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to push them like something, and then give them something, and then take it away, you know? I mean, it's, it's, no, that's it. it the, the one thing with Goldberg, um, with, with that whole squad, squash match with Survivor Series, my my thinking is, if he had a 20, 30 minute match, would he still have been criticized for that instead of doing the squash match? Because he, here's me thinking, because if he, if he did a 30, 20 minute match with Gold, with Brock Lesnar, people would have been compl- complaining, oh, they're not booking him like they did with WCW. That is not the WCW Goldberg. WWE booked him like the WCW Goldberg, but still got sh- shitted on. Is that a a lose-lose situation for Goldberg in any way. No, because remember, Goldberg's last ever match <clears throat> with WWE was WrestleMania 20 against Brock Lesnar. And they had a long match. So it would make sense for them to put him in a long match for two reasons. One, the last guy he faced was the Beast Incarnate, who left WWE for the fail, failed turn in NFL, but then went to UFC and was a beast there. So it would have showed that Brock was a beast, so have, he, it's going to be a while. He just ca- just can't crush him. And secondly... A lot of people wondered if Goldberg would still be able to maneuver at his age. And it's not to knock him for the fact that he's 50 years old or something. It's just he's been he's been out of wrestling for 12 years. In that entire 12 years, he had one event. He did one event in South Africa, and that's it. And it's not knocking South Africa, but he did one event in 12 years. People are wondering, can he still do it? The fact that they crushed it, it's as if a lot of people started saying, I don't think he can do it. They probably did this as a, as a cover-up. I don't think he's able to maneuver as, as he used to do back in the day, you know? And it left a lot of room for people to wonder and think and make conspiracy ideas. Some of it could be true. Maybe he can't move like he used to. But it doesn't look good for him, the fact that they did a crush like that, especially once they did it again at Royal Rumble, which just builds up to the fact that we know that the Brock Lesnar-Goldberg uh, match is going to go on for a while, and it's also going to be... Um, it's also going to end up with Brock Lesnar winning because goal, their la- both of them had their last match in 2004 against each other and Goldberg won. Goldberg returns now and crushes Brock, and then uh, which was supposed to be a way of crushing Lesnar for the drug test and made WWE look bad. And then finally crushing him again at Mania. It's going to be the exact opposite. They're not going to bury um, Lesnar again. So... Well, I, I wouldn't think so, because if, he, if he's winning the Universal Championship at SummerSlam, I, I want to build him for, Wrestle, for WrestleMania. Sorry, if he's going to win the title at WrestleMania, you'd you want to build him up and not have him lose at all. Right. So, and that's why they're doing how they're doing. They'll, they'll make Lesnar look like a beast for other stuff, but when it comes to facing off against uh, Goldberg, they've been burying him. Just to have him become such a super beast for everyone to be like, oh my god, he got himself back. He worked out. He got prepared. He's able to knock down the the man. Who's next? It's not Lesnar. It's Goldberg. Now, everyone sees through this stuff. WWE makes their plans too obvious these days. Which is a shame. Okay. I know I sound like a downer and I apologize, but... Yeah. Uh, trust me, I'm down, down on WWE product as it is now, so who isn't? Who isn't? Besides Vince. Uh, okay, I guess we'll go move on. Have uh, we still got a lot of time left? or uh, About eight minutes, so we can eight, go for about minutes. another five minutes for sure. Okay, we'll probably give one more, one more thing. 2i5 Live. Your thoughts on 2i5 Live? Apparently they're looking at taking away all the wrestlers, the cruiserweights from Raw, and keeping them only on 2i5 Live. And I think that's going to be good. Because it truly shows there's an established brand in my mind, rather than having these guys perform on Raw and the network. Some people say, like, oh, well, they needed to be on there because, you know, that's how it gets their name out there more. You don't see NXT wrestlers on uh, popping up on the Raw or SmackDown. The only time you do is when these guys come up and become permanently on the roster, you know? So, it, it's good for them to move them there. I can tell anybody this, you know... Everyone talks about how they got all these different championships, too many belts, too much gold. Trust me, eventually they're going to be making more. Not just with their global plans, but even in 205 Live. 
I wouldn't be surprised if in a year or two, two uh, Triple H even said that 205 Live, he wanted to become a traveling brand that does tours, just like NXT. So make no mistake, there will be a WWE Cruiserweight Tag Team Championship. And yeah, the hard part is trying to figure out what they're gonna, if they're going to have a third title along with it. You can't do a Cruiserweight Women's Championship. Supposedly all the women are supposed to be Cruiserweights anyway, minus Nia Jax. And it's not going to be a cruiserweight, cruiserweight. What are they going to do? Make a flyweight championship? That ain't going to work. So uh, they're going to, but they will have a cruiserweight tag team titles at uh, on two or five live. Whether they call it cruiserweight or two or five tag team championship, either or they will be there. So if they can give them the other belts, let people build up and get a lot more cruiserweights on there, yeah, then go for it. So uh, I have actually title opposite of opinion of that um because here's the thing because apparently it's vince mcmahon behind the 205 live show he's the one writing it and producing it and you can tell the difference between a vince produced show and a triple h produced show and i can see this becoming a taped show and just end up being with a championship on a, on a brand somewhere because if, if you look at and uh, hopefully it doesn't go like that because you you look at some of the these cruiserweights they don't get reactions they don't get the the attention that they should and people in the arena that watch smackdown end up leaving and only quarter of the show actually stays to watch the two or five live show so it's kind of a situation will vince end up pulling the plug at some stage yeah um well, I mean, supposedly the whole reason for 205 Live being made was one for more content, but also the Cruiserweights weren't getting over enough on uh, the main roster, so they had to panic and think, well, we just did this whole thing. What are we going to do? Well, let's fill up the space that we had for the Cruiserweight Classic with the Cruiserweight uh, TV show, you know. Um, but I think it was also just they got desperate, you know. It, they used to do great with Ted, with the light heavyweight champions. I mean, I remember the days of Dean Malenko. Jerry Lynn and Jeff Hardy as, te- as light heavyweight champion. Um, when Takamichi Noku first won, it was uh, he he did great with it. People just think of him as Kai and Tai, but he was a great light heavyweight champion. WCW perfected the cruiserweights. I mean, from from Hoovitude to Seiko C, Eddie Guerrero, Rey Mysterio, Chris Jericho, all former WCW cruiserweight champions. They knew how to push it. Vince McMahon's never done good with smaller guys. The guy doesn't like it. You know, people have been talking a lot lately, and I'm sorry if I'm going on a rant, but... Uh, and I'll no effort. That's what it's for. Well, uh, yeah. I'll, well, we got about only, what, five minutes left at this point. Uh, but okay. I'll knock this up into uh, 30 seconds uh, with four and a half minutes left. Vince McMahon, people talk about lately with uh, the XFL, uh, how, what, what Vince did and how it failed. I got one better. Look back to the 1980s. Vince McMahon tried to create his own bodybuilding company, the World Bodybuilding Federation, the WBF. It lasted two years, and it was supposed to compete against uh, other bodybuilding ones, like there's the North American Bodybuilders and some other stuff. I don't know the full names. Um, He tried to compete against them. It lasted two years, I think 81 and 82, and that was it. Because people forget Vince McMahon was a professional bodybuilder in his own right. Now, not super professional, but he did his own stuff, and he trained with people, and the guy's always been ripped for that. So he wants the bigger guys always. And like even, you know, I'll shut up right here with C-Pipes. He even said at least it did last longer than the XFL. Very true. But the point with that is it just goes hand in hand more with how Vince McMahon is not great with smaller guys. If they're built and muscular, then sure. Rey Mysterio, Eddie Guerrero, and currently Neville are all ripped. What the, what the uh, hell they did with Neville on the main roster before the Cruiserweights, I don't know what happened, but, yeah. I have a theory Vince wants to try the XFL again, but that's another topic for another time. Yeah. Um, I guess we'll wrap up with the show, so you want to go for your plans first? Uh, sure. Um, you know, I'm glad you wanted to do this, you know, have me, uh, you know, I gave you the idea for this, but you, you accepted it, and I'm, I'm glad for that, you know, help you get out there. For anybody listening, you. Um, please follow Sky G and all this stuff on his Twitter, on his, uh, here on Mixler and his YouTube. I know he's going to plug them. Um, quickly, we don't have a Saturday show this weekend. No conspiracies. That'll be next week. We're fortunate Mish will be coming on next week to discuss uh, next week's uh, conspiracies in kayfabe. And we had him last night for the after party. It was a lot of fun. Uh, we're growing, and that's great. Sunday evening, we will be having our breaking news report. So you can tune in for that um, and listen here. 
uh, what is it? Check, uh, the only plugs I'll say is for our friends. Check out Combat Pro Wrestling out of Washington State. They are the uh, company we got with in uh, Washington State. I built a good relationship. We're going to be plugging them as much as we, uh, as much as we can. They plug us. Um, and then also our sponsor. Please, if, if you guys enjoy wrestling, boxing, Muay Thai, uh, MMA, check out Fight TV, spelled F-I-T-E. Fight is, uh, check out uh, fight.tv forward slash WNC. Again, Fight is spelled F-I-T-E. It'll take you to the download. If you've never downloaded or had an account with Fight, you can sign up and install. It's completely free. And enjoy all the wrestling you want, from Ring of Honor to ICW to uh, boxing and Muay Thai and all these different companies across many I didn't even heard of before. So that's the joy you get to have. So much indie wrestling you can find. Um, and if you, like I said, I keep making making the mark. If you guys are a fan of good old Jr. Jim Ross, he is the executive advisor for wrestling for them. Uh, I'm going to shut up now. That's my plugs. We got 90 seconds left. Okay. Th thanks again, Jeannie. Yes. Uh, I'd like to thank you all for listening to the Sky Genie Show. Please like, share, and subscribe to my channel on YouTube. Follow me on my website at skygenie.weebly.com. There you'll find all links to pretty much everywhere I have the show. Uh, check me out on Facebook, the Facebook group page, the Sky Genie Show page. On Twitter, it's SDD916. I'd like to thank you all for listening. Thank Johnny Florida for coming on, and we'll catch you next time. Yep, and for now on, this is how Sky Gene is going to be starting to go live, so he's going to start doing things on his Mixler, so please check him out on, on his Mixler, and that's where he'll be uh, doing his shows from now on. But anytime he's wel he's welcome to come on down, have, a good, have some good old Aussie fun here with a bunch of uh, American wankers. So uh, thanks again, Jeannie. Um, no worries. Um, I'll let you get the last couple of words in. Yeah, you said your, th your thanks, but you deserve. Oh, uh, okay. Word. Uh, last word. Yeah. Penis. <laughs>
please also make sure to check out Wrestling Soup. They drop at 9.30 on Thursday. Join hosts Anthony Missionary Thomas and Joey Numbers as they lightheartedly talk about the world that's happening in professional wrestling as well as other current events. While over there, please make sure to check out the Saturday Morning Shipbox. Have your voice and question heard as Mish and Joey answer questions on their thoughts of professional wrestling or anything else going around in the world. That show drops on Saturday morning-ish. The weeks it doesn't air is because they're doing pay-per-view Sunday. Yes, whenever there's a WWE pay-per-view, Mish and Joey usually review it, sometimes with John Draper. They also have shows on Stitcher and iTunes. If you want to catch the boys live, check them out on Mixler. Are you looking for a good laugh? Then check out Get in the Corner. Get in the Corner. Da Corner. Da Corner. With hosts Yuck Nasty and Dogger Baby. Every Wednesday night at 9pm on Mixler. Check them out on Wednesdays at 9pm on Mixler. For fans of the show, please also check out the Don, Tony, and Kevin Castle show. Don, Tony, and Kevin Castle show is a hard-hitting, with brutal honesty type show as they give their views on the world of professional wrestling and WWE. They're also on Stitcher and iTunes. If you want to catch them live, listen to them on Mixler. If you're looking for a very professional show to listen to, listen to The Solar Monster Sounds Off. His show, Smokes This One Entirely, is a very informative show. Join Jason Solomon as he gives his thoughts on the current events of professional wrestling. Catch his show on Podbean, Stitcher or iTunes. Also check out Jason Solomon's YouTube page where he does extras for pay-per-view shows or interviews with wrestlers in the business. Jason has interviewed the likes of Diamond Dallas Page, Bob Hardcore Holly, the legendary Jim Ross, and even Booker T. Definitely a show worth checking out. For my masters who are wondering if there will be Sky Ginny shows throughout the Christmas New Year period. So sorry. Not for the normal show, but check out the holiday edition of the Sky Ginny show. There you will find a review old wrestling shows from the past. I review them to today's standards. And to make it interesting, I won't even know what I'm reviewing until I do it. Of course I'll know before you, because I have to record the fucking thing, don't I? But it's filled with gags and more as well. So check out the holiday edition of the Sky Genie Show right here on my channel here on YouTube.